Hi, I'm Ari on the Oak Witch and today's video is going to be all about herbal magic. So this video is going to run down what it means to use herbs in witchcraft or in magical practices. I'm going to be going through completely the basics and hopefully clear some things to beginners who are interested in practicing witchcraft and like the use of herbs or the concept of it but don't really know where to start. So I guess let's start with what is a herb? Um, in witchcraft at least, herb isn't quite strict to its actual definition. The term herbal magic in witchcraft honestly just kind of refers to the use of any plant. It's not so much just herbs, uh, so people can use herbs or just any plant, any flower, trees. People use all sorts of things like resins as well as uh, sometimes things like salt and like orange peel kind of get thrown under this umbrella of herbal magic. So how do we obtain herbs in our practice? There are loads of different ways and something I want to emphasize um, is that in witchcraft, witchcraft is inherently about your relationship to your local land and no matter where you live, whether it's in a concrete jungle, whether it's in a lovely forest, you're going to come across plants, local wildlife, because wildlife exists in cities too. So in terms of what herbs you can use, I would recommend to beginners to start looking at what's around you because this will be what you connect to the most. Where you are just currently living, the land you stand on. So I have a little task for you. So something which I really recommend doing and I recommended this in my Herbal Magic Books video, is to get yourself a local wildlife guide. Now, this is one for Britain, and I have this one as well, which is Wildflowers um, of Britain and Ireland. Um, and it kind of, they're like ecology books. They kind of look like this on the inside. I really like this one. If anyone's in the UK and wants a wildflower guide, I think this one's really nice. It is Harap's Wildflowers. Um, and I just got this at Warstones. In these types of books, they will show you pictures, they'll show you there's like a map whereabouts they are found. There's growth information, height, what time of the year it flowers, its status, whether it's native or invasive, um, loads of e ecological information. And I think that these are really good to have so you can get an understanding of what to look out for. It's really interesting going through some of these and being like, oh, like this. I see these all the time and I never realized they're called ribwort plantains. Um, so very, very interesting. Something like this is really good to get. So get yourself a local wildlife flora or fauna guide. If you want to just stick to flora, just do that. You can get just standalone flora guides. Also consider getting a plant identifier app. So off the top of my head, there's iNaturalist, which is a really good one. It's a citizen science one. So what that means is actual researchers and scientists use the data that citizens, that lay people, upload into this database, into this app. They use that data for their research. For example, if they're doing a study on the presence of poppies in Britain, what they'll do is they can team up with iNaturalist, they can get some data given by people, you know, using the app, and they can see where people have spotted poppies, and they can use that data for whatever study they're researching. That's what citizen science kind of refers to. So this is why it's really cool to use this app because you're actually helping science. Other apps include PlantNet. I've not used that one, but I've heard people use that one. Um, there's Planter, which I use to help water my plants and keep a schedule, but I think they do an ID uh, thing on there as well, but you have to pay for it. Um, there's Picture This and there's Google Lens, which I find to be actually quite accurate. <laughs> so get a plant identifier app, because this will definitely help when you're out and you're just observing nature around you and to get a good idea of what you have in your local land. And from this, you can obtain herbs through foraging. There are plenty of foraging guides online, 
there's probably even some YouTube videos, I'm sure that they are. Go and have a research, go have a look. And I stress this because you need to make sure that you're foraging correctly. You need to make sure that you're not picking anything that's, you know, coated in pesticides. There's loads of pollution from traffic and cars on them. Um, you need to make sure that what you're picking is safe in terms of its toxicology. Make sure that you're not picking anything which is dangerous and dangerous to touch. That's why it's really important getting books like these because they usually stress what plants are toxic and what you should not touch. Also in regards to foraging, make sure you leave some for the wildlife. You know, don't decimate a whole area for the plant, for the spirit, just to pay it respect. But also so that you know where you're going if you're going into these wild spaces you are also stepping into some animals homes so make sure you're not getting rid of all of their food leave some behind don't take it all so there's lots of little things like that to bear in mind but that is a way you can obtain herbs through foraging your local area and it's a great way to connect to your local land to bond with your local spirits your gina loci it's a great way to obtain herbs it's a very witchy way. That's not to say that other ways aren't witchy, you can just go to your supermarket and go to the herbs and spices section and get some herbs and that's a completely valid way to obtain herbs and use them in your practice. Another really great way which is a bit more of a deeper connection is to grow your own herbs. This is something which I have recently done and it's been really lovely and being able to connect to that plant on a really personal level is really nice. That's a way that you can engage in some spirit work and also have something, you know, your own resource of herb magic. Another really common way people get herbs is just through buying them online and it's totally valid. I guess if you want to be more eco-friendly or eco-conscious, the advice I would give is to make sure that you're buying from within your country or just i guess be sure that the destination where you're you know you're buying from isn't too far away so it's going to do loads of miles to get to you try to be as local as possible but of course if none of the prior options i've discussed are available to you please don't feel guilty in buying from you know amazon or buying from whatever online you gotta do what you gotta do so don't feel guilty about it but if you do have the options available to you then i would suggest yeah perhaps just being a bit more eco conscious and shopping locally and foraging if you can so how to store herbs now once you have the herbs uh, people usually store them in glass jars and keep them out of direct sunlight. This is just to preserve them a bit more. Put them in glass jars I think is great. If you only have plastic it's not the worst option in the world. I'm just wary of um, plastic sort of leaking sort of toxic chemicals into the plant. That's why I opt for glass. And you can reuse glass jars that you get from your kitchen as i've mentioned before in my videos um jars are pretty easy to come by when you start looking for them <laughs> so how do we use herbs in witchcraft well in so many different ways one really simple way is just adding them in spells for example if we take these clothes um these are associated with protection and a bit later on in the video i will explain how you can connect to plants and get their correspondences and such but how i'd use them in a spell for example if i wanted to create a protection uh, charm bag i would get a charm bag over the years i've kind of just collected this stuff so don't feel bad if you haven't got things on hand use what you have but for example if you're making a sachet here's a random sachet that i have black for protection color correspondence cloves protection correspondence as i'm an animist i believe that plants have spirits they are spirits um so in terms of how i use herbs in my practice what i would do is i'd take some cloves in my hand and i'd probably have them in part of my hand and i would kind of speak to them this has developed over time over just general practice the way that you use herbs and the way that you do certain things will change over time and that's completely okay it's okay if your uh, way of working magic is different to like two months ago because mine certainly is and that's okay things change people evolve it's totally fine but i would add clothes in my hand and i would speak to the clove i would smell it if it you know if the herb is aromatic i would smell it and i would touch it and just 
be with it, connect to the plant, and I would tell it what I want it to do with me in my working. And add it to the bag. That could be a protection charm bag, you know, specific to an intention that I've uh, told that I wanted it to do for me. And then you would pop this wherever on your being, you could pop it in your bag if you want protection for the day and you're traveling around, you could pop it under your pillow if you need protection from nightmares for example, and if I wanted it against nightmares perhaps I'd add in lavender as well because lavender is good for dreams. If you don't want to get too into the spirit work side you can treat it as a plant having a correspondence or an associated symbolism, cloves, protection, lavender, dreams, put them together, protection against nightmares, and that can be the way that you work with plants. This obviously it's gonna look really different to each practitioner because witchcraft is a personal practice and the beliefs that you personally hold obviously will be different to another witch. So the way in which you actually work with these plants can look really different. I'm only trying to just give from my perspective. So if you have something completely different and you feel a different way, then obviously that's valid and go with what works with you. Other ways in which you use herbs in spell work, I guess, is through the use of jars. People add specific herbs for specific, you know, correspondences, association, symbolism into a jar, combine it for an overall overarching intention. Um, do the energy work alongside of it and that jar can be something which again you can keep on your person it can act as a talisman or an amulet or you know in whatever way you can get really creative but it's the idea of either just being with the plant letting it know what task you want it to do for you or charging it as people like to say instead um, and then it works with your magic. Favourite spell method of mine using herbs is a shaker jar this is such a fun spell, I love it. So that's another great option. Other ways people use herbs are for incense. So that's something I really like doing is making my incense. And this is why I use my mortar and pestle and I put some herbs in there. You can get different incense recipes online. Chuck some herbs together, put it with some resin like Popal, which is what I have here, um, which looks like this. So if you put some of this with your herbs, the incense will burn really nicely and plus it smells really good. And yeah, so you can burn incense, you can do that as a part of your working, as a part of your spell. If you're doing, if you're creating a uh, protection charm bag, for example, maybe in the background, you'd burn some protection incense just to kind of add a layer on top of that working. Charge the bag with the protection incense smoke, for example. Get really creative. This takes a bit of practicing, toying around certain ideas, and then you can get to a good rhythm. You can get to a good place of what works for you and what doesn't. Other ways in which people use herbs is through the creation of spell oils. Now, this can just involve getting carrier oil, for example. Grapeseed oil is um, a personal favorite of mine. So you, you get a jar, put in some oil, put in some herbs. As you're putting in the herbs, charge it, whatever, and put them in. Leave it for the herbs to actually get absorbed into the oil for, I think, roughly two to three weeks. I store it out of sunlight in a dark spot and then strain the herbs or keep the herbs in if you want. And then you can use your oil. I like to put them in these little jars where um, they have a little pipette. So you can drop it onto, for example, a charm bag. You can drop a bit of oil to correspond with the intention into the charm bag, or you can drop it onto a petition before you add the petition into the charm bag. You can just drop it on your body. You know, you could just rub the oil on yourself. Um, so many different ways you can use the oils. And that's another way you can use plant magic. Another way in which these spell oils really help is through the use of making some salves or balms. Um, if you want recipes for uh, salves, I recommend the Green Witch, it, and you probably already know who she is, uh, so I probably don't need to plug her, <laughs> but she has a load of balms and salve recipes on her channel, so I just recommend watching those. But what you would do with these spell oils is you can add them in your uh, salve, in your balm, and that can be your overarching intention for the balm. Other ways people use herbs in magic, I guess, is through candle magic. People put herbs on the sides of candles, which I like doing. However, 
just be careful you're not creating a fire bomb because herbs are flammable okay especially if you're rubbing oil oil on the side as well to have the herbs stick onto the candle these things are flammable it's literally fire so just be careful you're burning the candle on a specifically fireproof plate practice your fire safety so so important okay it might sound a bit you know oh gosh but just do it because you just never know fire can get out of control really quickly so that is a way people use herbs in their pra in their practice but just be careful okay another real quick way you can connect herbs in your craft which i'll mention is through essential oils i i like essential oils i have quite a few and i use them in my craft but i think um, I'll link Aliokai's video on essential oils um, here or just below. Um, but what I want to, I guess, express is that essential oils are, are quite unsustainably harvested. So there is that kind of issue there. Um, their resource footprint is quite high. And plus, in general, they can be quite toxic. A lot of people misuse them in that they definitely need to be dilated. Otherwise, they can cause quite bad skin irritations. Also, you shouldn't be uh, burning them if you have uh, children or pets. Everything Eliokai explains in the video, but if you can find a good ethically sourced retailer, then yeah, I really recommend essential oils because they're great ways you can add them in spell oils, you can add them just in your, you know, charm bags and, and stuff with your herbs, you can put them in sprays, yeah, loads of different ways you can use essential oils. Another way in which you can use herbs in practice, in a lot of uh, British folk magic customs, um, it would involve just hanging a sprig of a certain plant above a doorway or, you know, on a window or something, and that can act as a talisman. Uh, so using herbs can actually just be as simple as just placing the herbs somewhere. It doesn't have to necessarily be incorporated into a specific spell method. Actually, some people just I have a hanging lavender in my room for uh, peace and happiness um, and it can just be as simple as that. And obviously you can go even further into herbalism in which I'm not going to give a lot of advice about because I'm not an expert in herbal medicine. I am an absolute rookie. I'm not in any position to educate on that but that is definitely a path you could go down and it's definitely a way in which you can work with the plants and form that deeper connection with them. A really great way to start, I guess I would say, is through the use of tea. Be careful with herbal medicine. Obviously, certain plants are toxic. Certain plants can produce certain effects. So just be careful. Make sure you're researching and researching is important. So ways in which to connect to a plant more. So through practice. And I think that is realistically the best way you can connect to the plant better the plant spirit more and to get better at herbal magic is through practice practice makes perfect however something which obviously is equally vital is research my advice is don't isolate yourself to herbal encyclopedias so in my years of practice whilst um getting these books is these herbal magic books uh, is really nice and really lovely. These are not the only way you can um, learn herbal magic and these shouldn't be the only way. Uh, but aside from those herbal magic books you can also look into folklore, what I really really recommend. Now some of the folklore books which I'll just mention that I have in case anyone wants to look them up. Um, this one I got at a um, cherry shop that's under the hawthorn um but more recent ones i guess are these ones there's ink right um i've not gone through this but i've gone through this one um and on the inside at least they are oh, they are absolutely beautiful i don't know if you can see absolutely stunning really lovely folklore and folk tales in here uh, really lovely books and they're quite cheap as well they weren't too pricey which i was surprised about um so yeah 
Got those two as well. Um, these two lovely books by Corinne Boyer. And this is a recent purchase, which is just folklore of different plants as well. So folklore is definitely a way you can connect to the plant. Stories of the plants can give you insight into its overarching symbolism and the way people used to have relationships with them. So that's a really great way, which isn't necessarily strictly witchy. Folklore is something which is relatively mainstream, it's not necessarily specific to magic and our occult community. There are plenty of folklore books out there which you wouldn't necessarily see in the mind, body and spirit section. So have a little look. Another way which um, I thought I'd mention, you can connect to your local land, your, um, well, the earth and I guess your local plants as a result is through the study of conservation. This links I guess to ecology but I guess I mean more actual ways in which you can become a eco-warrior and protect our planet and have a better relationship in the way in which you use the earth and its resources. I'm not necessarily re recommending these textbooks because one they are expensive because they're uh, university grade textbooks so they're always expensive but you know one way in which you can read up about it is through these textbooks they are available for anyone to buy but they are pricey and these are just some of the ones that i have and then i have an animal behavior one as well but learning about conservation in which there are plenty of resources online and if you join my discord server i have listed a bunch of resources for you to look at um but learning about conservation i think can really help you get into this idea of connecting with nature spirits connecting with the plants you're using because you're getting a wider background as to why we're using these and the respect we need to have for our earth and its lovely inhabitants another way in which you can connect to herbs on a bit more of a indirect level I guess is through making a herbal grimoire. Now the one that I have is all the way over there and I can't be bothered to go and get it but it is a binder. Another place where I store a lot of herbal information is on my Google Drive uh, Book Shadows grimoire. Um, so that is definitely a way in which you can connect to the herb. You can go and fill out this kind of like about me page about each herb and have that in your journal, book shadows, grimoire, google drive folder, whatever, wherever you store your information. That is definitely a way you can connect to the herb. You're not necessarily working on it one-on-one -on -one, but this is a way in which you're building a relationship because you're getting to know the plant, you're researching it, you're getting an understanding of how it works and what it does, what it looks like, how it behaves. And this is a lovely way in which you can connect to the plant. So I guess I'll round off this video with why do we use herbal magic? And the answer is I guess, well the answer will be very different depending on who you ask. I guess my answer would be that having a connection to the earth, to nature, to the natural landscape is something which has um, always made sense to me. It's been something which I've always loved and I think many of us can recall memories in childhood of connecting to nature without even realising. For example, I have so many memories of in primary school um, taking buttercups and placing them under my chin and if it glowed yellow that means that I like butter or something like that <laughs> or standing by the trees when I felt sad on the playground and I would just go stand under the sycamore tree that was in uh, the primary school I went to and I would just sit underneath it and who knows why I did that that's what I just really felt like doing at the time. I think for a lot of us witches it makes sense. If you're an animist you use herbs in witchcraft because you treat them as spirits that you're working with and obviously in that sense it makes sense to use herbs in your magical practice. Connect to the earth, to connect to that element, the natural landscape, you use the herbs and form an even more deeper connection by personally working with the herb one-on-one. -on -one. This is why a lot of witches use natural materials because you're having that relationship with the natural world 
and you're doing it on such a fundamentally unique way and something that's really personal and direct. So I think that's all for today. I hope this was a concise enough guide. Um, herbal magic is something which um, I love doing and I think many witches do. And yeah, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Also, I wanna know, what's your favorite herb? If you use any already. My favorite herb to use in my practice is probably mugwort. I do love a bit of mugwort. But what's yours? I wanna know. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.